Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. And welcome to our Take 10 play date. It's so great to see it. So many of you guys, I love that some of you guys have been joining every week. And it's so fun to just get to visit with you on Tuesdays and see how your world is going and play with our beautiful art supplies and just have a good time. So let's bust into it. Good morning, everybody. It's so awesome to see you. Okay, let's bust into this. So today the topic is stencils. And again, the idea of these art play dates is not necessarily to create a beautiful finished product, but just to play with your art supplies. So I highly recommend you just get a cheapo journal. This one is just from a store called Tuesday Morning. You can see it is just a place where I have been playing, I've been trying some different techniques, and I don't have to worry again about the finished product. It's just about getting to know my supplies so that when I do jump in to something that I'm working on, that I have an idea of what I want to do, and I'm used to some different techniques. I really feel that if you just take 10 minutes to play with your supplies, then your creativity is going to be sparked. You're going to be interested. We've already discovered in our nine weeks together that 10 minutes is actually super hard to stick to, um, but sometimes that's all we can find in our day. And I know for me, my kiddos are home today because of voting that is happening happening. And so um, we'll see if we can get through 10 minutes without uh, someone jumping in here. So stencils is the topic for today. I love stencils. If you have been watching my videos, you already know this. My stencil collection has grown immensely in the past years. I've been art journaling and stencils are a really great tool to play with because they can be used in so many different ways. So let's get going. Um, I I'm gonna use these couple pages. I might jump onto another one if I have time. I've pulled out just a few stencils that I'm gonna work with, some Distress Oxide inks, some Distress sprays. I have some embossing ink because I really wanna show you a technique with um, clear embossing. And then Pixie Spray. If you don't already have Pixie Spray, this is something that you are going to want to pick up. It is a must have for stenciling. I just absolutely can't talk um, enough about it. I agree, Terry. It is a really good use of your money because you can do so much with them. So stencils are cheaper as far as tools go and you can use them in so many ways. So, hey, Jessa, good morning. Good morning, Amanda. Alicia, I never did see that face from last week. So I don't know. Maybe it's just I just have a block against it, I guess. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. We're going to bust in and talk about stenciling. So Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Seven now. Okay, so I've pulled out just some different Distress Oxide colors right here, and I'm going to use this brick stencil from Tim Holtz. And so a clue about stencils is rarely do you want to go to the edge of your stencil. So don't come all the way over here or else you're gonna end up with a harsh line, which is not something you want when you're stenciling. Also, I almost always am blending colors on my stencil because it gives it some more depth, some more interest and is just a little bit more effective in creating the look you're going for. Here's vintage photo, one of my favorite ones. And just adding this on. So see, I'm gonna create kind of a brick background. I tend to work from lighter to darker. Um, in case you're wondering, the Pixie Spray, I already sprayed it on the stencil, so I will definitely demo that with my next stencil. I just wanted to be ready to go. So I'm adding a little bit of the bricks in the background here. Oops, oh no, mixed up my Distress Oxide. Do you guys ever do that? This is why usually I don't have more than one Distress Oxide open at a time, because I get all happy and talky and then I mess up with my Distress Oxide. So let me see if I can blend this a little bit down here. Now, these are the domed blenders from scrapbook.com. I picked them up uh, a couple weeks ago maybe. I had them in an unboxing recently and I, am loving them. So basically all you have to do through most stencils is kind of work in that circular pattern 
See, and you get a really nice blend with these. I need to add just a little bit more over here coming off the page. And I'll show you guys what I'm planning to do. I wanna to try to layer stencils and I picked two stencils that I don't think you would normally put together. I do like the dumb ones, Debbie. I like them actually, I like them much better than the flat ones. I have had a lot more success with um, not getting the lines, the harsh lines. So the dumb ones, like I don't know if I'll go back. I really, really, really am loving the dumb ones. Filling in just a little bit right here. So you can see, I usually work in the middle of a stencil. I don't like to go to the edge because I like kind of that, I don't know, more distressed feel maybe. Let me close these up before I have a huge issue. Okay, so that was just the first layer. It's fun to play with stencils like that. Try combining some different colors. See what effects you can get. This is called a masking stencil. So a masking stencil is different in that what you're trying to do is you're gonna get this image, but you're gonna get this image in the colors that are underneath it, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna spray my pixie spray Oh yeah, just the, the makeup brushes work really well. And I have also used a, um, like a blush brush. You can see, I'm trying to not spray my computer with this, but so I just spray the Pixie Spray. It kind of reacted, got it a little bit on my project. Usually I bring it over to the side. And hello, good morning. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this right here. Lay it down and the pics, did I spray the wrong side? Oh guys, I got all distracted. Let me spray again, hold up. I'm getting distracted this morning. There's just a lot going on. You know, I wanted to try the picket fence ones too. Those are on my wish list on scrapbook.com. Okay, so for a masking stencil, I'm gonna come in with a darker color here and blend around the edges. Masking stencils are my favorite, actually my favorite by far. So um, I searched them out. They're a little bit less common, actually, I have found, um, but I am loving them. Now, with a masking stencil, you do want to go over the edge with this one. You do want that completely covered. I'm getting a little, because I'm in a hurry. You do want it completely covered because you want to see what is under Neat. So you're going for the outline. And these are really fun, especially if you are enjoying just kind of creating your own backgrounds. You can play with paint, you can play with anything and then put the masking stencil over it. You can put paint over the top of it and you get just a very neat effect. As I come around in here, this butterfly one happens to be one of my favorites. I wish I had it in a little bit of a smaller um, format, which I might work on making my own with my silhouette. But see, I'm gonna pull it off. Isn't that cool? You get that beautiful butterfly wing. And then something I really like to do, those um, sponges are the domed blender sponges from scrapbook.com. Okay. So what I really like to do, I come back in with my water brush. Cause if you notice, I use distress oxide inks. Um, you guys know I love distress oxide inks. And what I like to do is just blend out the edges here. And that makes, once it all dries, it just softens up the edges, which I really enjoy that look. And then I can come through here and if i was doing this for a project i'd probably take more time and really work on blending this out and so see how you can still see what was in the background but you can layer your stencils in all kinds of fun ways so that is my butterfly mask stencil this morning now, you can also use sprays with your stencil. So this is a more intricate stencil. We'll see how it goes. Actually, 
I was gonna do it on here, but that's not really a smooth background. We'll try, maybe we'll try over here. Okay, let me use my, again, my Pixie Spray. Get really good coverage. So what the Pixie Spray does is kind of just makes it sticky on the back. I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna kind of position it like this. Makes it sticky so it stays in place. You get a crisper image, especially when you are using spray. So these are the Distress Oxide sprays. Here it is, warm lipstick. This is picked raspberry. Ooh, that was bright. Add some Victorian velvet. I think my picked raspberries got some things going on. And then I just come in with a paper towel, get up some of the extra right here. Let's see how it did. Now that was a lot of liquid. Let's see how our pixie spray held up. Look at it. So pretty. So it got a little bit crazy down here. Let's reposition now. Try it. So I did not spray any more pixie spray, but we'll see how it did. This one wasn't pressed in, so that's going to be an issue. Come in. And I really like Victorian Velvet, guys, is like my new favorite color for Distress Oxide. I love it. Yeah, the Pixie Spray is where it's at for stenciling. Okay, just picking up some of the excess. Let's see. So see what a pretty impression that makes on the background. I just love, I love, love, love it. And I kind of like, so if you're using sprays and you don't want this to happen, let me just spray a little bit more pixie spray over here and put this right down. So what I recommend doing, if you want to use sprays and you really are looking for a crisper image, come up higher so it's not quite as thick on there. I'm mixing some. It's that pink. That is like going at it on the pink. Go up higher and then definitely immediately dry. Blot and dry. All right, let's see how that one did. Ooh, that's gonna be cool, I think. A little bit crisper, but also what's cool is because it was higher, you get, if you can see, just kind of a more pixelated look which is a lot of fun. Okay, let me show you real fast how to create a masked stencil out of a regular stencil. So I'm gonna start by just spraying some on this paper and I wanna kind of dry it as quickly as possible. I just wanted kind of a color in the background. So just sprayed some of my spray down on the paper and I'm gonna try to dry it. I may have gotten too wet here, guys. Let's see if I can dry this. You know what I might do? Let's switch over here. Alexa, stop. Okay, so these pages already have color on them, so they're fun to play with. Let me show you this last technique. Take your stencil, add your pixie spray again. I kind of wave it off over to the side. And then I'm just putting, we'll add mine up here. Okay, then something that is super fun to do. I've totally made a mess. Look at my desk, it's crazy. Okay, I take my clear embossing ink pad and I'm just gonna come through and I'm pressing pretty hard. I want that embossing ink. I'm trying to get down here real close. Y'all gonna end up seeing my head. I'm trying to get that embossing ink rubbed on there with this ink pad, get a nice good coverage of it. Okay, so did that, I'm lifting it up. I'm gonna come back with clear embossing powder right here. And I'm going to put this over the top. Now, I'm almost out of clear embossing powder, so I might not get as good of a coverage. Let me pull this to the side. And then basically bring it off. Tapping, if I had more time, I would come through with a brush and get all those little in-between pieces out. But I'll spare y'all that at the moment. And then 
I'm going to come back with my heat tool. Look at my hands. It's crazy today. Okay, y'all, you should see. Let me see if I can raise this up. Guys, look at my desk. Look at, look at what I did right there. No worries. What do y'all use to clean up your workspaces? Me, it's the um, magic eraser. Works awesome for getting all of this up. So this is just slowly heating up. This will start to melt. And this is how you can kind of turn any of your stencils into a masking stencil. And I'll show you in just a second once I get this all melted and dry. So you can't see it once all of that embossing powder melts. But when I go back over the top, then you're gonna see what I am talking about. So let me get this melted in here. Anyone got some fun plans for Tuesday? Like I said, all my kiddos are home. I think we are gonna play some Monopoly. So wish me luck playing Monopoly with three little ones in a little bit. Okay, all of this is dry. Just letting that off. And let me go get a better color. I didn't have a good color picked out. This is the Dusty Concord. One of my new favorite colors I just got from scrapbook.com. So all of that is on there. I'm gonna come back and look how fun that is. So that turned it in to like a masking stencil because if I had, let me show you the difference. So that is what it looks like when I did the embossing powder and it's so fun because I told you masking stencils are my favorite. Once I figured this out, then it's like all of my stencils can be masking stencils. So there's the difference. If I came back and I did just through the stencil, you can see how you get a different version of that. Look, and it's fun to play with it kind of back and forth. So see, see how you get the different versions with the same stencil. So it gets even more life out of your stencils and it's super fun to play with. So here's my recommendation. Pull out some stencils, have a fabulous time playing with them. See what techniques you can do. I didn't even get to the basic, like, hey, you have a big stencil like this, trace it color it in with different colors, blend some different things, use some different mediums like texture paste and acrylic paint, all kinds of fun things to play with. So that's our 10 minutes. Thank you for joining me this week. I will see you next week. I think there's a chance that I might be out of town. So be looking for the advertisements or I'll make an announcement if take 10 has to be put off for a day but I will definitely let you know. I hope you all have a fantastic day and as always, keep it creative.